Hi there. Welcome to App Drops, your monthly spotlight into the latest and greatest apps hitting the Webflow marketplace. I'm Victoria Plummer from the Developer Relations team, and I'm here to guide you through today's review. Whether you're looking to automate your workflows, localize content, or add powerful design elements to your site, Webflow apps are a great place to start. And the best part about it is that most of these apps work directly in Webflow, helping you to integrate with external tools and take your site building to the next level without ever needing to interrupt your process in Webflow. Today, we're diving into three amazing apps that launched last month. First up is a new version of Zapier that lets you create and manage your zaps right in Webflow. The second, Local Lazy, is an app that uses machine translations to localize site metadata, content, and CMS content. And lastly, Twize, a contextual chatbot to engage your audience directly on your site. Let's get started with the demos. All right, let's explore our first app, Zapier. So let's go to our apps panel. We'll open up that panel and look for Zapier and launch the app. Here we'll see we can explore different Zaps uh, for different apps. And then we can also see our existing Zaps. I have one right now that's off, but let's set up a new one. So I have an Airtable base where I'm going to capture some leads. And I'll go ahead and go to Webflow and look for Airtable in my Zapier app. Airtable, there we go. Here you can see there are already some pre-made templates to get you started with creating integrations from Airtable to Webflow or Webflow to Airtable. We're gonna look for create Airtable records from new form submissions. I'll go ahead and try it. And then I'll, this will open up the Zapier editor. Here you'll see a new trigger, new form submission in Webflow. The app is Webflow and the trigger event is new form submission. I've already authenticated, so my account is already filled in. I'll press continue. And then now I'll need to choose my site. So I'll do Astral Fund. And then I'll need to choose my form. I know my form is the email form on the homepage, so I'll just choose that one. Now I can continue. I'll go ahead and test my trigger to see if there are already some submissions to see what they look like. So we found a new submission and we see all of the information that's coming from Webflow to Zapier that we can then use in Airtable. So I want to see the display name of the form and I want to see the response of the email that someone put input. I'll continue with the selected record. And then my new Airtable action is create or update record. I'll choose my Airtable account. And then I'll go ahead and choose my base. So here I have my Astral Fund CMS and my table is leads. I have a very simple base, but it'll get complex soon, I promise. Now, it'll ask me for a primary lookup field because it's asking to create or update a record in Airtable. That means if someone fills out my form twice, I don't get a new lead twice. It just updates any extra information they might add. So I'll go ahead and say my, e my email field is my lookup field. Then it'll ask me what else do I want to put in my table. I don't want a secondary lookup field. I do want the email to come from the Webflow form. So I'll choose email. And then assignee, I'll leave blank because that's our triage workflow that we'll manage in Airtable. I'll look at status, um, which will always be new. And then date created, that's a formula field. And then source, I want to say that this came from the email form. Continue. And now I can go ahead and test this step and Zapier will send the record to Airtable. Let's look. There we go. All right, let's see this in action. I'll publish this Zap, take a little second to go live. And now I'll head over to my site and fill out the form myself. Oh, you got me, I already filled it in. Let me try again. I'll do testing123 at gmail.com. All right, my submission has been received. Let's go see if the Zap move that to Airtable. And it did. So now I can assign someone, I'll assign myself to manage this, I may add some notes, so on and so forth. You can add any number of fields uh, and create that Zap. Let's go back and now let's look at the Zapier app in Webflow. So I can see, I can try more Zaps if I'd like, or I can look at my existing Webflow Zaps and see the different ones that manage, uh, are managed by Webflow or used by Webflow. And then from Zapier, from the app, right within, 
Webflow, I can go ahead and say, oh, I want to edit this. I might want to step, I might want to check something. Um, for me, I don't want to do any of that right now, but you can go back, edit your zap, look at what your, maybe change a form field, maybe add a new form field and re redo your zap. So you can manage this all within Webflow uh, without ever leaving and uh, distracting you from your workflow. All right, back to the apps panel for our second app, Local Lazy. So I'll open the apps panel by pressing E, look for Local Lazy, and now you'll see because Local Lazy uh, works outside of Webflow, it just uses our data APIs uh, to grab CMS uh, and page data. We actually are just gonna go to the Local Lazy app here. And what we'll do, I've already signed in, so let's look at my dashboard. We're gonna create a new project. I'll type Astral Fund demo, put my little two lines in it. And I'll say English is our source language and I will create a new project. I'm on a business trial right now, so let's see how it goes. So then it'll take me to an integrations page and it'll say, what do you want to integrate your page with or your, your project with? I'm going to integrate it with Webflow and it will say, connect your Webflow account, which will bring me to the app page where I can see the um, things that Local Daisy can do. So it can read my user data, read site data, page data, CMS data, e-commerce data, and component data, as well as make changes to page, CMS, e-commerce, and component data. Um, these are all things that are, uh, can be localized. So we'll go ahead and find our site. I will authorize it just for Astral Fund. You might be able to authorize it for multiple sites, but to be, to be safe here, I'm just gonna do it for this one. All right, I authenticated, uh, it sees my website, it sees that I have two languages already set up. And what I'm gonna do is actually go to settings and say, I wanna import existing translations because as you see here, I already have um, an existing French translation. If we go back to Astral Fund, Astral Fund is already set up as a, localiza a localization demo. So we have a Francais uh, version of our site. What we're going to do with Local Lazy is see if we can create a Spanish version. So let's go over here. Let's import to Local Lazy. And so what this will do is it'll use the APIs to ca call the Webflow API and see uh, what content it can import into Local Lazy. Ah, e-commerce translations are not currently supported by Webflow. Good to know. So you'll see it's looking at co content nodes, component nodes, all of that. So our import is finished. All right, so now our French is in there as well. Now the next thing that we can do is start a translation. So we'll go to translations and add a new language. Let's look for Spanish. I like that it tells how many speakers there are. I'm gonna see that again. 481.7 million speakers. That is pretty cool. All right, so it'll tell us all of the machine translations we can use. We can use um, these different ones. We'll just use Amazon Translate, and we can send the translations for review. Because this is a demo, I'm not gonna do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and just move on. And as you see at the bottom, it's translating our, our stuff. One thing I think I'm gonna have to do in Webflow is in my settings, I always do that, sorry, in my settings, I think I need to set up Spanish. So I am on a business plan right now and I've added uh, for three locales. So I've already done that already, but you might need to update your locale settings to, to make this work. So my display name is Spanish, yes. Here we go, let's see, let's save this and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna save and then go back to local lazy. Now, I'll click it and it shows me uh, what the source was and then what the translation was. So Astral Fund's virtual assistants are a breath of fresh air and customer service. Los asistentes virtuales de Astral Fund son un solpo de aire fresco en el servicio al cliente. That was my, uh, seventh grade Spanish. <laughs> okay, so now all of these are shown as accepted. Let's move forward into now sending them to Webflow. 
So I'll go back to Webflow and I will go to export to Webflow. Let's start the export. We'll reload the languages, call the Webflow API. Okay, so our export back to Webflow has finished. Let's jump back into Webflow and see what's changed. All right, so we're in our English locale. Let's change to Spanish. And here we see our information has been translated. So this is a component and a component instance. So our component instance hasn't been translated, but let's get into that in a second. So here, our CTA, our buttons, uh, our, our hero text, all of this has been changed, uh, even down to uh, changing with the, the comma versus using a, uh, a period, uh, as well as information that's in our CMS. So these cards are driven by CMS content, have also been changed. And we can even jump into the CMS to see our testimonials have been changed. Uh, I will note that these are queued to publish because when we created the new locale, uh, these are all net new, so we will need to publish them in order to make sure that they show up on our locale. One thing I did notice was that the metadata that I thought would translate actually didn't. So that was something that you might need to handle or jump back in to uh, local lazy to do. Uh, we see we're all connected. Um, I'll discard these changes. Uh, and review what was changed here. I wanted to jump back into the navbar instance because components can be a little bit tricky. So here we actually have these are all props and properties versus them being static content. So we'll see, get started. Uh, this right here, this in this text block here is actually static content. And so if you notice when we switch in between um, English, we'll see we have EN, and when we switched into Spanish, that actually changed for us. So uh, what Local Lazy was able to do was it was able to access and change the static content. Here we have todos los derechos reservados. Please excuse my Spanish. Um, but uh, for props, those will need to be changed manually or we'll wait on an update from Local Lazy. So that's a great overview of a translation service with machine translations different ones you can choose from, and let's move on to our next app. All right, let's walk through our last app, Twise. So we'll go ahead and open the apps panel, launch Twise, and Twize is gonna ask me to add an auth token. I don't have one right now, so I'll just go get one. I'm already logged into Twize, so I can do that. Paste it in there and authenticate. Oh, I can't find my uh, URL, so we'll go ahead and create a new one. So I'll create from a website. I'll need to add the website in here, and what Twize will do is it will scrape it and, and look to see uh, what information it can use for uh, the chatbot. So let me grab my link, paste it in here, and it's going to use AI to uh, create a model that allows a user to interact and ask questions about all the content on the site. So here you'll see it already sees Astral Fund. Turn on, I'm gonna skip this, but you could do automatically capture with Twize if you'd like. I can preview and see what this would look like. And also Twize will talk to me if I'd like it to. I don't want it to right now. Walk me through a little tutorial. Awesome. So let me ask Twize, um, what do customers have to say about Astral Fund? And twice, customers have shared positive experiences with Astral. I'm gonna unmute. I'm gonna mute that. But here you'll see it's grabbing images. It's grabbing uh, text from the the content that I have on the site. If I just minimize this really quickly, so you can minimize your app and the sidebar down here. Uh, I'll look down and you can see I have customer uh, information here and this is what they're saying. So Twize went ahead, uh, put that into its model and summarized this for somebody who might ask that question. I really like the uh, text-to-speech that it has in case um, someone has a little trouble reading or um, just wants to get uh, that personal touch. For me, I use text-to-speech all the time so this is a great feature for me. But now that we've previewed it, uh, let's go ahead and close it out. Uh, and now we'll say share. Um, we can grab the widget. 
uh, and we'll see it here. You can open it up, close it. So now I think I want to uh, go back. Maybe I will close this right now and come back to, to start. <laughs> Oh no, there we go. So now I'm back to my Twize dashboard and I'm gonna go ahead and say I want the widget and I wanna add it to my site. Twize has me copy code here and it'll ask me to put it in my custom code on my page. I'll go ahead and minimize this, go to my page settings, go down to my custom code, and add that right there. I will save it. I'll go ahead and publish my site. And now let's take a look at our staging site. Okay. Here we have Astral Fund, and we should have Twize pop up right here that says, ask me anything. What do you want to know? I'd like to continue without audio, and I'll ask, what are the smart budgeting There we go, we got a quick answer right there uh, with some images just to be nice. Uh, so you can see how this can be helpful for people who wanna get a quick answer from all of the resources on your site. If they don't wanna dig into some of the deeper pages that you might have, they can answer that right here. So this is a great option to get started and we love being able to set it up right in Webflow and even we can go back, make some changes, maybe say we want it smaller, change our text color, I the follow up, any of those things, customize it, and then it'll be updated on our site. That's twice. All right, before we wrap up, here are a few more apps worth exploring this month. Flowstar tabs, easily add tabbed content to your site. Leads Vibe, capture and manage leads easily. And Newton, a content management tool that lets you repurpose old content across platforms and score it with tools like Yoast SEO. Check them out in the Webflow Marketplace. That's it for this month's app drops. We're always excited to show you how Webflow's APIs and marketplace apps can transform the way you build and manage your sites. And we are incredibly thankful to our developer community for constantly coming up with great ideas to help Webflow users. If you wanna see all the apps we covered today, head over to the Webflow Marketplace or open up the app side panel in Webflow. And if you have any questions about our APIs or ideas for your own app, drop them in the comments below. Our developer relations team is listening and we would love to hear from you. All right, you know what time it is. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.